So we found it partly together with Daniel Bovan, my partner, and he's actually a Swiss guy who oh, ended up in okay. Finland. For him. Uh, <laughs> well, we found it partly really based on our uh, project in placemaking and really wanted to create something different in terms of uh, offering uh, any, well, basically stakeholders that are part of urban development, this kind of easy, flexible tool to turn places around. Hey everyone, welcome to the Active Towns channel. I'm John Simmerman and that is Paivi Ravio from Parkley in Helsinki, Finland. And we're going to be talking about uh, this new company that started about two years ago uh, to be able to create some modular, circular, urban furniture and social gathering places uh, for people and for pollinators. <laughs> I think it's a lot of fun. I hope you enjoy it as well. So here is Paivi. Hi, Evie. Thank you so much for joining me on the Active Towns podcast. Welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, Paivi, I love having my guests uh, just give a, a quick little introduction uh, to themselves. So take about 30 seconds. Uh, who is Paivi? <laughs> yeah, I am an urban designer and placemaker. I'm based uh, and work and based in Helsinki, in Finland. But we also work worldwide, basically, but mostly in Europe. And yeah, I'm a co-founder of Parkly which is urban, modular, circular street furniture. I love it. I love it. This is so fun. Uh, urban, modular street furniture, circular street furniture. Yes. That's great. Well, I'm sure we'll touch <laughs> upon all. all of those uh, those words and, and terminology and descriptions. What was the, the real history and, and story behind getting started with this movement how you know what was the inspiration yeah i mean i've been uh, studying design and public art back in when i lived in london and um that sort of the living and sort of studying and actually growing up to be an adult in such a city was i think big inspiration for me uh to to become uh, interested in in, uh, in cities in social life in how to sort of design settings for social life. And placemaking is really close to my heart because of my background in, in kind of various fields of design and, and social design too, that we can actually, as designers and planners, uh, have a big effect on how our cities are alive with people and designed for people and not so much sort of function driven and kind of infrastructure driven. So we often call our work like such as this one, uh, which we did in, in Helsinki, kind of light infrastructure for social life in cities. Well, that sounds so, like so much yeah. fun. I mean, that's not as serious <laughs> as I think cities should be, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. I think that people really make cities alive. They, they make places alive and neighborhoods like without people and their sort of touch on places and eagerness to organize events and meet others. Without that, we don't really have great cities. So we really have to pay attention to that. And uh, with placemaking, this is really the, the point to do that uh, with various methods. And what we really advocate in our work is, of course, playfulness, as you can see in this photo. <laughs> we like to get people, yeah, less serious about their cities and also kind of reimagine their cities. So play and playfulness is one key aspect to this. And children, of course, and young people, they lack this kind of presets that we adults might have about public places, how we can use it what sort of rules there are and children and young people are for that reason, great sort of a focus group to reimagine our cities together, like car park places or <laughs> other sort of spaces that we got adjusted to. Yeah. Yeah. I love this too, because you know, th this, it, it, we were joking around earlier about cities are supposed to be serious. Well, why? Why? It can be serious fun <laughs> and exactly. engaging. And, uh, and, and, and what's interesting, too, is that when we, we look at the history of cities 
and how cities were, you know, came together, they were very social interactive environments. It wasn't until really the automobile took over our public realm and our space and it became, you know, we sort of dehumanized our space. And so we're just kind of taking it back. And it sounds like the inspiration behind Parkley is, you know, some of these these images of, of reclaiming space for people and for interaction and for fun and engagement. Um, I think this is just absolutely beautiful. I mean, these are obviously incredibly beautiful photos <laughs> as well. Yeah. Yeah. So what was yeah. that next step, you know, from the, the, the initial, you know, you know, the seed being planted or, or maybe, you know, what, do you draw from any uh, global inspirations of movements that were happening? Yeah, definitely. And, and you said it really poignantly that we thought of how our cities were previously and how sort of cars took over and sort of this imbalance between how we divide our space or dedicate it to really, really sort of happened. But this this project uh, in the photo is a really good example of that. And actually that the, one of the sort of lead ways or pathways to create Barclay. So this is in Helsinki Market Square. And we had a, a project with Helsinki City to create something temporary to the parking spaces that used to be there. And can you imagine this beautiful spot would be for cars to <laughs> store cars? <laughs> so uh, they sort of realized that within this really vast uh, aerial development, there has to be something quicker, easier, faster, which place making often is. And we, we came up with this modular park which really became like a hugely popular spot. And I'm still hearing from citizens or people who visited that place, what all they could do there and see, even though it's really simple. But we had kids playing, there was skateboarding, there was people lying and relaxing on this kind of prestigious spot in Helsinki. And I really loved seeing how this, this space kind of turned into a place for people. What we did after this, we took these modules to another district in Helsinki and, and saw how easily we can do another welcoming place, uh, social and green, uh, with these modules. And that was kind of the starting point for us. Uh, also in our project, to have a tool that these kind of transformations are really fast and easy. But first and foremost, we wanted to make it more sustainable. So partly started off from thinking of how how we can do the same thing with a circular approach yeah i love it this is so cool this is so much fun and i love too that you know most of these images have a, a splash of green there's some greenery and some natural elements to to all of this because that's one of the things that we really lost in our cities, you know, when everything gets paved over. And oh, by the way, the only thing worse than this being a, a, a car parking space is this being motor vehicle travel lanes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but and yeah, this talk, here, actually, yeah. yeah talk, talk a little bit about that because yeah. it, it's it's clear yeah. as, as we were looking at all these images, there's that little space flash of green in there. There's natural yeah. elements that really soften the environment. Yeah, exactly. The softening is really the key word that we sort of came across uh, in all our projects. That this, this sort of wish or hope for more greenery is wherever we are working, even though Helsinki, for instance, is a fairly green city, but our squares are really gray, our streets are gray, and there's a lot of gray space we can still green. <laughs> and and uh, for instance, this photo here is, is one of the first Parkley projects where we did this parklet with the modules. And uh, this used to be like spot for two cars. And and the, the alternative we create here is a uh, like spot for 30 to 40 people with more greenery and so on. And you can really, with the greenery, I think it's about contrast. Uh, contrasting this kind of hard surfaces, um, gray surfaces, but it's also something that yeah softens 
the perception of, of our what our city spaces could be. Um, it's a multi-sensory experience also. Um, as we saw, there was one photo with kids uh, planting and, and these are really important small fragments of nature that if we have a daily contact to such spots of nature and greenery, we can really see the impact in our daily lives too. Yeah, yeah it's, it's so important. Um, and I love the fact that you, you, you talked about, um, you know, the kids being able to interact with that environment. I think that is so incredibly important. We just, you know, it, we, we miss so much of this, you know, when everything's super, super sterile and, and, you know, yeah. the kids aren't able to like really get their hands dirty and play and, and all that kind of stuff. So being able to, to have, you know, this type of environment that encourages that, I think is just so incredibly healthy. Yeah. Yeah. We talk a, a lot about mixed cities and sort of healthy mix of functions and healthy mix of people in places. And I think we also want to sort of mix the boundaries between what's how we are with the nature in cities, because quite often if it's decorative planting, we're sort of do not touch and all that. And we want to bring it close to people. And this, I think, it is sort of visible in, in Parkly projects too, that the greenery is, is part of these places that we create. Yeah. And this is a sneak peek of uh, what ends up becoming, you know, from those early seeds of inspiration to uh, the company that, that uh, you know, that, that emerges. And then we can see that modular uh, aspect of it, of, of we can move things around. And we'll talk about that in a little bit, too. Uh, but then again, we, we see the, the greenery and we, we were able to integrate that into the design. Absolutely. Yes. So brilliant. <laughs> so much fun. Thanks. So happy to hear that. I think that with the kind of the greenery, the aspect of greenery is, is goes can you can really take it quite far. So in our in our projects, for instance, those trees that are in this project that will be uh, next summer in in city of Turku, that these trees, for instance, can be then once they grow to certain height, we can plant them in the parks and kind of really think of this cycle, life cycles of also the greenery greenery and plants so yeah it's really nice nice that what's temporary is actually such, just an idea that there's a lot of permanence in this project yeah yeah i love it this is so much fun um so i want to take us backwards though just a little bit to talk uh, a little bit about the context of of where you're at in the world and so uh, so, so, you know, you're, you're here in, in Helsinki and, you know, I've got a, a bunch of places, you know, starred here, uh, you know, some places that I've been and some places where I've interviewed folks, uh, already on the active towns podcast. Uh, but if we really zoom in and we, we take a look at, you know, the context of where you're at in Finland, by the way, I've interviewed, I think I mentioned this to you before, I've interviewed uh, Pekka Takola up in Oulu, Finland, way up, you know, towards the uh, Arctic Circle there. And uh, we talked a little bit about, you know, the long winters and, and all of that. And I get the sense that that's one of the reasons why, you know, having these elements of color and vibrancy uh, probably is really, really important for, for you all in, in Helsinki as well, is that you know, when spring comes along, like it is now, and, and your, your days are getting a little bit longer, having that splash of color, having that sp splash of, of that touch, those elements of green really, uh, you know, help brighten your day, I would imagine. Yeah, definitely. And I think it's about also like making the most out of that outdoor season and public places so that, and that was sort of highlighted through, through during COVID also that, um, yeah, that the kind of the quality of uh, public space is really, really important and that we can find such sort of pockets of greenery and pocket parks, close proximity where we live and work is, is really important. And I think Helsinki is, is densifying at a quite rapid speed. And I, I really can sort of sense that there is a little bit of worry of, uh, losing the some of the green green spaces and so on and I think also for that to balance that we can 
make our squares and streets and yards that are basically like asphalt much, much greener. And there's a lot of ways we can work around uh, kind of creating that balance. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the landing page for your, your, your website here, obviously. And, uh, I, I think I'd love to, to play a, a little introduction, uh, video. Um, hopefully the, the, the music won't get us in trouble <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> we can, we can give our voices a, a rest just a moment and, uh, and we'll listen to your, your partner. As I, I scroll down to this, why don't you just give a, a little bit of an introduction to your, your partner in crime here in terms of uh, yeah, sure. your story? Yeah. Here's, here's your, here you are. And here there's us, Pithola yeah. of Daniel. Yeah. 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 So we founded Barclay together with Daniel Bovan, my partner, and he's actually a Swiss guy who oh, ended up in okay. Finland for him. Uh, <laughs> Well, we found it partly really based on our uh, project in placemaking and really wanted to create something different in terms of uh, offering uh, any, well, basically stakeholders that are part of urban development, this kind of easy, flexible tool to turn places around. So Daniel is uh, in charge of mostly the product development, okay. but we are running the company and also uh, yeah, with his sort of Swiss background and connections to the German speaking countries in Europe, we right. we have already projects there too. So, wow, that's yeah, great. It's, it's okay, nice. Well, let's <laughs> let's give let's give this a try. Let's see if we can actually play this and not get in trouble. <laughs> so. All right, <laughs> let's give it a go. <laughs> Barclay is about innovating public space, uh, and we found it Barclay to fast track sustainable urban change. It's modular, multifunctional furniture for adding life and urban green in public spaces. We wanted to design a product which functions in many ways, is durable and easy to use. It's just like playing Lego in public space and it was designed with circular economy in mind. We launched a software tool called Parkly Create in which you can easily build your own designs, visualize them with AR on site and share them with others. Parkly is based on collaboration because together we co-create better cities. Very cool. Now, how, how many years ago uh, have, has it been since you, you started Parkly? It's two years ago and it, it was kind of like a also a COVID time project for us because some of our projects where we work as consultants and designers sort of slowed down and we, uh, we started to have a think like how would we like to work with this modular idea that we've had a long time ago already and had tested in this Helvetia Market Square. And uh, when we actually linked the concept to circular economy, it started to make more and more sense. And also interviewing our colleagues around the Europe and also architects and city planners, we really realized that there's a need for something that's kind of street furniture, but created by placemakers who know about places and not so much just putting benches around. So what we, what we sort of highlight is that we it's not just a product, but like together with people, we form places. So we want to, with the kind of assembly of modules, setups, we want to bring people together. And it, the outcome can be an outdoor office. It can be an outdoor gym, a pocket park for pollinators or an edible garden or terrace or parklet. And this kind of multi-use, multifunctional uh, aspect really creates this sort of opportunities that we can actually reimagine our spaces, whether it's a street corner or riverside or, you know, like outside an office, which are often very boring places actually. So why not having like an outdoor, uh, you know, like a room for having a nice break or meet your colleagues and so on so we've seen a lot of yeah need for something like this what we are doing and of course we are really happy about it because that's ultimately our passion to create change and and sort of 
turn places around. Yeah. Yeah. I love this too, because it's like, you know, for cities that are, are in communities that are starting to come to grips with uh, an understanding that their public spaces can be utilized uh, more effectively and become more people oriented, then they get to sort of this, that next step. And they're like, okay, yeah, but what do we do? And how do we do it in a way that isn't tacky and terrible and, and just, you know, kind of icky. And, and then we get lots of complaints about it being not well done. And so this gives this, this empowers, uh, you know, many cities, many communities, and, and maybe even, you know, a, a cluster of businesses to try to activate and beautify and, uh, and, and improve and enhance and make a, a spot, a dead area outside of a, you know, a business park area or outside of a bunch of eateries and, and, and really bring some life to it. And Parkly Create is your interactive uh, platform that kind of helps, right? And, and, and kind of gives some power, innovate, uh, it, it, and, and, and helps people be able to figure out how to do that. And so literally you can just press start, you know, start here to create and, and you can start going. And so you, you end up, you know, popping over, uh, to this screen here, it gives, you know, individuals that ability to use the, the Parkly editor and, uh, and be able to do that. And, and you've sent over a, a project that you're, you know, is court, sort of already in the works that we can, uh, once it loads up here, we can actually kind of play, play with it a little bit. And let me zoom out just a little on this one so that we can get a, the full view. There we go. So once we're here, we can actually like, this is interactive, right? Yeah, this, yeah. this is actually a plan that we are working on on a pocket park. Oh, so wow. as you can see, so like fun. with different uh, <laughs> different modules, it's there's like endless combinations. And I think what what's really inspiring, even though it's super simple, the simplicity is actually key that you can make many things out of it. And we also have different sort of add ons. We are, for instance, now working with a company which does modular skateboarding elements. So we'll have one modular skateboarding ramp uh, attached to a project we now work in the city of Helsinki. Um, but yeah, this, this tool is really fun and also a tool that uh, basically anyone can use to try things out with the modules, see how it would look on site. Um, yeah, like just again, like we wanted to make it as easy and simple as possible and I think this tool really helps in that that you can realize that basically if you would like to cover let's say five parking spots with a mini forest uh, you just create quickly a, a set of modules and see how how it works and how it would look so it's very simple I think like someone just said to me Parkly is a transitional tool and I really like that that sort of thought that you can really, it's not only already in the planning stage, you are sort of thinking what this space could be rather than what it's currently is. But also then when you see that real change, once we've implemented it, it's transitioning how we think of our public spaces and what, what it can be in the future. So even though we call Barclays like temporary uh, solution, but temporary can be in, anything between two months to 10 years. But what we want to sort of keep in mind that in the long term, we, we create these spaces that planners and decision makers could really embed these sort of solutions in public spaces already in the planning planning stage. So. Yeah, I, I love, you know, I, I love speaking in those terms as well. And I think this really came into our, our dialogue and part of our um, our, our language when we were describing um, during the pandemic, when we're trying to move lighter, quicker, cheaper, and we're doing very uh, temporary types of installations to try to create more people oriented places. And I would say, yeah, that first step, that's really, really, you know, 
piloting. We're, we're just putting some stuff out there. And then, you know, it's like, oh yeah, after we move some things around, then we get into like that transitional phase. And so then you have your, your interim materials, uh, that are maybe a little bit more robust, like the Parkley materials here, uh, before, uh, a city can be like, yeah, no, this is super, super effective and, and, and wonderful. We need to, to double down and actually put in some permanent infrastructure. Uh, and so I, I love that, you know, those different stages of, you know, that uh, initial lighter, quicker, cheaper, put it in. And then you guys, yeah, you guys fill that, that nice little space. Although in some places there, you, you may skip right to your phase, which is this transitional yeah. phase of the interim phase. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that, uh, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I, 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 I love, I love some of your case studies that you have here too. So we, we have yeah. a, a little, you know, pocket park here in, in Groningen, uh, there in the Netherlands and, uh, you know, and you can kind of see a, a little bit of what's going on here. Um, talk a little bit about your, your clients and, and your, the locations and, and it's, you mentioned they're mostly in Europe. And so, so talk a little bit about the clients. How, how do you, how do they hear about you and how do you kind of service them and, and be able to actually deliver, uh, you know, product to them? Yeah. Yeah. I guess our sort of key, uh, client groups, our target groups, are cities and municipalities, as, as mentioned, we have many already, uh, also in Switzerland and, and Finland, um, that are really hoping to yeah create like fast change and and uh, appealing places for and show that they can also do something quicker because cities are a little bit slow and rigid <laughs> so we can change that our other target groups are like office parks and campus areas because there's actually quite a lot of potential sort of unused potential in those uh, i know there's exceptions in this but many campus areas and office parks haven't really thought of the space in between buildings much at all. And there's actually some, some kind of, you know, unused potential of them that how you could actually um, have an impact on, on people who work or study there and their sort of daily, daily rhythm, well-being, connecting to others and so on. And then we, of course, work with urban designers and architects or developers who who want to use our solution in their projects. So somehow like what we do also, that we use Parkly in our placemaking projects because yeah, it works. <laughs> so we have this sort of uh, collaborations and yeah, the one in uh, Groningen in, in the Netherlands is one, one example of that. Yeah, that's fantastic. Now, Earlier, we were mentioning the fact that we're, we're striving to, to you know, create this in a way that is circular. Talk a little bit about that terminology. Uh, what do you mean by circular? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's uh, somehow a really interesting topic in terms of design aspect also. So we have a product which is based on circular economy from the design principle. So that means that every part is, uh, we can replace it if it breaks or if there's some, something happens to it. So we can replace parts, we can modify the use of the partly setup so that basically it has this flexibility. So if there's uh, some needs or use change, we can adapt that instead of getting like new product in. Um, so the kind of life cycle is circular through that materials and parts are circulating in different projects or within within one project and and they are durable materials and so on so the circularity affects our materials choices but also a lot of the design decisions we make in terms of creating these parts so we've actually moved on from what you can see we have a set of like wooden side modules but now we chose for the durability reasons and design reasons to move more towards having like metal sided modules so that we can still make it even lighter in terms of setup and flat back it and so on. One of the, for instance, one um, kind of challenge we've, uh, we've sort of identified is that 
cities and municipalities have less and less storage space themselves. So whatever the, the solution is, it should be something that really fits small places and and all this kind of uh, mass of modules and greenery, all that can be packed away and put store, stored in the winter. Um, but what we are also now doing in Finland, and I'm really happy about that, that we can, together with the company, which is developing innovative green solutions called InnoGreen, we can now offer to cities and municipalities and other clients uh, sort of a package. So they can basically get a partly pocket park with all the greenery, everything set up and taken away for the winter if needed. And all the green materials and all the parts are circulating uh, within the system. So it's quite advanced, I would say, in terms of how in a small time frame we managed to <laughs> get it going. And uh, in other European countries, we are we will start looking for partner companies that we can do the exactly same thing in, in other, let's say in the Netherlands, for instance. So I'm really enthusiastic about what will the next few years sort of hold yeah. for us in that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, my, my, my next question is more of a business related question. Uh, when are you going to be uh, opening up your uh, office and uh, distribution here in Austin, Texas? <laughs> I don't know, but I definitely, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I feel like I could say something really courageous like next year, but I, <laughs> I think I have to hold myself a little bit back. It takes a while to establish such things, but the amount of interest we've had and uh, also we've had con connections from Canada and so on and Japan, um, this gives us sort of encouragement to, to really, yeah, look, look into that opportunities i'd say we first focus on on the new european first european partner companies but you've got a lot of work think, ahead of you right where you're at yes <laughs> and I, but what will you keep saying this is a global solution and there's really need for it i think this um urbanization and all the sort of opportunities as well as challenges it brings such uh, solutions are really needed and, and we keep hearing this so i think yeah, it's it's more it's only going to grow in terms of what are the opportunities with this sort of solution. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, and just the fact that you know, in a very very short period of time of two years, uh, you all have been able to uh, you know establish you know so many locations and case studies and 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 different client locations and. Um, and really bringing vitality and vibrancy and life to to space. And it, this isn't a new idea, really, when you think of it. I mean, it's it's been something that has been, you know, really talked about and reimagining space. Um, I was just interviewing Blaine Merker. Uh, in fact, his episode, you know, published just yesterday um, from when we're recording this now on April 13th. And, uh, you know, he was part of the... Uh, the parking day movement with rebar in San Francisco when they, you know, kind of took over that very first uh, parking spot, and, you know, because they were like, well, wait a minute, it's two dollars like an hour to take over yeah. this, you know, to park a car <laughs> there. Well, what if we turn yeah. this into a park? And so they did. And, uh, you know, it's you know all these many years later, this continues to, to evolve and develop and mature. And to your point, yeah, during the pandemic and during the lockdown, we started to, you know, reframe our thoughts of, oh, my gosh, you know, what about that public space? What about that that place that is, you know, just dedicated to moving cars or parking cars or it's just dead space and let's let's bring some life and vitality to it. So I have to applaud you guys. I mean, this is just absolutely wonderful to achieve in, in such a short period of time. For your final thoughts here, any anything that we didn't cover that you think is really, really important that the audience needs to hear? Well, I think we covered a lot and I'm really, really happy about it. What I what I really feel and what we've maybe kind of highlight is really that with um, for instance this picture there with the with sort of pollinator friendly plants and all that uh, when we 
replace these uh, modules in, in, let's say, public squares, for instance, we've carried out studies together with uh, kind of stakeholders in a project. They, it was really encouraging to hear that uh, even with such kind of fairly small islands of greenery, you can really have an impact in uh, to support urban nature and biodiversity. So I think that this this is important to highlight that um, it's not just nice to look at, but you can really have an impact. And we are often and always basically saying that um, working with small places can have a big impact, uh, kind of big change because uh, we can create a network of them. And yeah, that's, that's our sort of mission that through this network of small public places, we can create more livable cities in total or in whole. Yeah. Yeah. I love it too. And, and it's, I'm glad you highlighted um, the pollinator side of it because again, it, it reemphasizes the importance of having those green elements uh, integrated into this. So it's not only people oriented places where we're welcoming and, and, uh, and that softening that environment and welcoming people there, but we're also inviting and welcoming the critters too. We're bringing, yeah. you know, we're saying, Hey, <laughs> you know, nature, come back, come back, please. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, here's, exactly. here's some pollination opportunities for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And what's also encouraging then to hear from people because they, um, there's a lot of, let's say, maybe not despair is maybe too uh, drastic word, but kind of worry about climate change and all other environmental uh, sort of huge challenges we are facing. and. Um, sort of citizens really feel that these are way too vast sort of phenomena to understand or even sort of picture what sort of solutions we could have for them. But the, the feedback we've ge- uh, gotten is, is really that seeing this small positive change in where they live and work has really given them kind of concrete examples what can happen in their surroundings towards sort of that are linked to these big phenomena and trying to resolve this and develop more like climate climate friendly cities so this has been really also a nice and empowering message and also maybe an, uh, kind of as a greeting to our audience there that yeah small public places have a really big meaning to people's lives so let's keep developing them into more social and green yeah, I love it. I love it. And again, uh, folks, you can uh, you can find uh, Parkley out at helloparkley.com. And here's the contact information that's out there on their website. So pop on over to the website and uh, check it out and, and play around, you know, see if you can design your own little, uh, create your own little Parkley. Uh, pa Evie, thank you so very much for uh, joining me on the Active Towns podcast. This has been an absolute joy and pleasure. Thanks for having me. It's been really fun. Thank you. Hey, thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this episode with Paivi. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, Leave a comment down below. Uh, Can you think of some places in your community that could use some life? Bring in some more people, maybe some pollinators, some fresh greenery. Uh, I can think of quite a few. (laughs) Uh, And also, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. Just click on that subscription button down below and ring the notifications bell so you can customize your notification preferences. I'll be back soon with another episode. So until then, this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers. And again, sending a huge thank you out to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon, Buy Me A Coffee, YouTube Super Thanks, as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the Active Towns store. Every little bit adds up and it's much appreciated. Thank you all so much.